the most gifted, enhanced, and the highest order of creation that is perceived and assured by themselves is the mankind. For the reason that they are rational, having the ability to understand the nature, purpose, the integrity and values, not only to understand just a simple rudimentary authoritative principle of one's survival or existence or mere abortionation, <coughs> but also understanding the teleology of life as a totalitarian study connecting one's own life with the nature as well as the subhuman species. So, the totalitarian or composite view of life is not mere human beings with science and technology. It is a life of human beings with nature and subspecies. And this totalitarian benefit is said to be the development and any science and technology should lead to such a situation which benefits this totalitarian network. So, the real range of view or the real sense of science is to bring happiness to human beings which is a sharing happiness along with nature and other species. So, based on this, the nature and life has been made by a principle known as order. It is known as order or discipline. And those who are belong to the schools of thought of naturalism, accidentalism, nihilism, etc. They do feel that there is nothing order. We do systematize some order as per our requirement or emerging demands. There is no order such at all. And even in philosophy, there are a lot of atheistic, materialistic, pantheistic schools which limits the purpose or which totally nullifies the purpose of living. But the emerging science as well as the situation in the society that urges us to make an order according to science we have to create an order without which survival is impossible according to spiritualism there is already a global discipline without adhering to which a proper survival a productive survival will be just a myth so this order that is a rule or the code or the orbit of operation of each and every force of the nature if they are disturbed then they get into disaster and this disaster is nothing but the product of disorder that is in various areas so nature and life they are based on the axis of order and any deviation or the angle of aberration from this order leads to disorder and disorder when it is magnified when it is multifold when it can cause loss to lives their standards and status then that becomes disaster there are five major problems which are discussed as per the spiritual view number one the wrath of nature number two misuse of nature problems in self-handling problems in group handling and problems in handling your own tools so the nature's wrath is known as natural disaster which is geological disaster Aero disaster, hydro disaster, thermal disaster, these are all natural disasters. Misuse of nature is an environmental disaster. Self-handling problems that result as health disaster. And handling of groups that results in sentimental and social disasters. How to organize within ourselves. Lack of your proper collective responsibility and skill of execution. Then the final stage is without having the proper tools of handling the tools, we are handling the tools. How to handle the tools? The proper way of utilizing your own things. That's why I used to say, science is having two problems. First, it dealt with the problems of the society. This is the second phase of transition for science. It is dealing how to tackle the problems created by science itself. So it is the second phase of transition in science. So the fifth thing is, lack of proper knowledge of handling the tools. Handling the tools of promotion and development which you yourself have created. So based on these five things, lot of problems they arise in the society on the basis of which science is also parallelly emerging. Whenever there is a problem, then science gives a solution. The solution may make some problem out of a serendipity, unilateral coverage or lack of a long and proper vision. Science within a limited way of optical or intellectual view, they have been something else which creates a genetic loss or a long term malefit in the society. So the third level is emergence of science as per the growing problems. So science, uh, these uh, disasters, they have emerged. So science has also emerged in various techniques. Uh, how to detect, how to give warning, 
how to pass on the information by a network, how to make resources, knowledge resources by research, search, probe and traditional experiences and how to make these detection systems available through engineering and installation of power stations or workstations. Then it extends also to disaster mitigation, disaster management, disaster control, then various studies in disaster sciences. So all of these various sciences, they emerged due to the rule of natural emergency or contextual emergency. So these science systems, they emerged in the society, creating new problems, also created new problems are founded there within and new solutions are brought. How to implement the solutions and organize between the society is not a scientific duty and science cannot do that. Science can create a thing, but the created or scientifically manifested entity can be well distributed, productively distributed, monitored only by an aware social system. It is by the social vigilance, it is by the spiritual guidance as per the spiritualist, but it is also a social vigilance. On the basis of these various things, now we are going to discuss some sort of the disasters and create a dimension of a spiritual view or a totalitarian universal view for its solutions, for its management and for control and mitigation, various measures I have already mentioned. Now there is a problem known as crisis. What is crisis? Wherever there is a fear of extinction, wherever there is a fear of depletion, wherever a fear of uh, the total extinction of a thing which is undergoing depletion now, Wherever there is a possibility of fear, for example, disaster, what is created in the society due to disaster? Number one is loss. Loss means it is loss of life, loss of infrastructure, and uh, it is something in into the environmental beauty and bounty. It is also a problem that deals with uh, the economical downfall. It is also resulting in various uh, trauma and other unwanted conditions in the form of human impact also. So, it also creates a terror in the society. What is terror? Disaster terrorism is a new terrorism. What is terrorism? To create persistent perennial fear that it may happen to any person at any time, at any intensity level is known as terror. See, fear is entirely different. Fear comes to few people on few occasions and it is infinitesimal or it may be ephemeral. This persisting, perennial, inexhaustible trace or deep-rooted fear that is that the minds of the society is known as terror. Now we are living in the era of not computer world, it is not nano world, it is not a eugenic world, it is not anything else, it is a disaster world. Now we are, everybody is in the alarm of awareness of, alert of, danger of, terror of, research of, the same thing known as disaster in different things which have been covered now and which are yet to be covered later by spiritual people or a mega scientific or a meta scientific source, it is yet to be covered. So this crisis, I want to list some of the crises, all are disasters. If something is going to result in mass or colossal damage of lives, system, the system's order in sources of socio and economical factors, then everything is disaster. Let us deal with some crises like that. The first thing is food crisis. Let us look after the other things, develop things later. First of all, food is the basic thing of life. Second thing is water. Now we are facing global water crisis, they are marked for 2010. Something will be managed, but certainly it may be postponed, but it is not a joke like that. So certainly we are facing crisis for all of our essentials. Number one, food crisis. Number two, water crisis. The third thing is very funny, the air crisis. Now we are in need of oxygen bars. The air is totally polluted and after a few decades, like various bars in the societies, we will be having oxygen bars. The third crisis will be pure oxygen crisis. Fourth, we are facing the power crisis. We have been made to live in a power accustomed or power acclimatized life. Whatever we inhale, whatever the breeze that we experience, whatever the force that drives all of the mechanical outputs of the modern science, everything is driven by power. Conventional, non-conventional, recyclable, renewable, innumerable power systems are there. Power crisis. So these things are visible. There are some subtle crises which must also be considered. One is a population crisis, which is the population is also a disaster. It is population disaster. If lot of people die, that is also a disaster. If more than your accountability and your adjustability and administrability, if there is an overload, that is also resulting in lot of overconsumption population, population congestion, traffic population congestion is also there. Now after some decades, we will be getting air traffic congestion, air traffic population problems may come after a few decades or centuries. So that is population. Second thing is, uh, that is very important, 
Then there is one more crisis which is subtler than the subtlest that is known as affection crisis. There is no proper affinity between the family members, the members of the academic society, uh, both between the receivers and givers. That is the benefactories and beneficiaries of the various society in academic that is the student and the master, husband and wife, children and their parents, amicable members of the society between nations. Starting from an individual resulting in international scenario, there is no affection at all, there is no affinity at all, there is no tolerance and mutual understanding at all. That is also a crisis. Without attaching these crises in this disaster, the disaster study is incomplete and it is absurd and unilateral. The final is for everything there is a major crisis according to Shastra that is moral crisis. If there is no dharma, if there is no value of religiosity, if there is no value of eternity, if there is no value of righteousness in the society that will result in all unwanted things. According to Shastras or according to the science, there are four ways why nature misbehaves. Nature is very beautiful. <coughs> the same nature's beauty and bounty that has an ugly dimension in the form of disasters. Why it is so? Shastra gives, science gives four reasons. One, the first thing is balancing. Just to balance the mass and the energy levels of earth, it erupts at some levels, it bursts at some levels and there are a lot of such other abnormalities in the earth which is a balancing process of the earth itself. It is inbuilt destruction. Second thing is reconstructive process wherein by earth, by process of destruction, it reconstructs itself. The third thing is contribution, fourth thing is retribution. Earth of lot of disasters, the so-called disasters, they bring also some of good things. For example, some impact of the disasters, they have reduced considerably the carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, thereby reducing the impact of global warming. Likewise, in some areas, a reasonable flood that has brought fertility. So likewise, mismanaged disaster. So there are three things. There is also a contributive program of the nature, which if not understood or misunderstood or mismanaged, that will also be a crown to disaster. So disasters are of three types. One is unavoidable because vinasha or destruction is a nature and recreation is also a part of nature. So that type of thing is totally inevitable. The second thing is by means of mismanagement or improper understanding or lack of understanding totally at all, we are not utilizing the contributive resources. The third thing, already existing disasters by our lack of knowledge, execution, sincerity, vigilance and uh, harmonious way of organizing it, you are exasperating the occasions. So, there are inevitable disasters, there are improperly managed contributions of nature which has resulted in disasters, there are few mitifiable or uh, subjected to control and pacification, there are some limited disasters which are subjected to negligent subservience and the ignorance of the community which has exasperated the occasion resulting in mass or colossal damage, even small damages of very much magnified by colossal damage because of your mismanagement. So these three categories can be totally identified with the eight crisis. Now let us come into the earthquake. Earthquake is said to be the crown of all geological disasters. Now everybody since dawn till the dusk everybody is afraid of the earthquake at all. Earthquake has been dealt in Brihat Samhita. It has been very much dealt in Brihat Samhita. Once we have to organize that in our trust we must organize the traditional beliefs as well as uh, the technical beliefs, we have to make a common platform for discussion about early alarming systems and the causation factor study systems for these earthquakes. Earthquake basically you know that there is a natural earthquake possibility in throughout the world. Because of a principle known as uh, the galaxial isostatic adjustment. Because of the climatic condition variations, the glacial molten things they drive into the system at all resulting in increasing the sea levels, inducing the gravity resulting also in earthquakes. So naturally the climatic condition or the global warming <coughs> or the various environmental, the totalitarian impact of the environmental mismanagements or misbehaviors caused by the human community, there is an eternal danger and alarm for earthquakes. Apart from which the tectonic plate debilitations and tectonic plate shifts that happen between inner layer infrastructure that is also a reason for that. So they are caused by seismic power or seismic energy. This uh, seismic energy if released they burst into some areas where there is a thick population that is where there is a vulnerability due to overloaded population then that creates a very great damage. In other areas it is not considered. Even though human beings the only problem is they consider only human life as life. They don't consider about any other life form.
they don't give any significance at all so that which is very vulnerable only to human life and thick infrastructure well developed infrastructure as it is in mumbai and hyderabad they are pondered much as if rural lives are not valuable or the other species their lives are not valuable whenever the mentality is like that and uh, going with the spatial supremacy or racial or fiscal supremacy of one's own status then that is it always the human being to be vulnerable or to be a good receptacle for disaster prone nature so whenever a human being realizes that he is only a part and everything is a composite structure then immediately his receptivity and understanding of natural disasters and the alarming systems of his cognitive load it will properly work so apart from that there is a shallow based block is there and there is a deep uh, based block is there depending on which now we are getting lot of uh, various uh, disasters in which intensified impact is getting a uh, very deep thing and a shallow thing that creates a trivial loss so these type of systems are well studied and also an earthquake has innumerable various other things earthquake to create an earthquake it requires lot of process inside the earth according to shastras the early earlier and earliest detection even before that is formed even before that is formed when the energy eruption taken is taking place and second thing is when there is a shift when there is inception of a shift in the plates of the seismic zone or the epicenter so when that is happening then that we can have a possibility of getting scientific intrusion intervention and then knowing these things the third thing is when it gives the shaking and other perceptible symptoms then also we can prevent that so earthquake not only gives earthquake but also it has lot of other connective and psychic impacts earthquake results in a problem known as ground rupture it results in shaking then it may results in tsunami and it may result in flood it may also contribute to fire and electrical accidents so innumerable other connective systems are there so the problem is we have to understand the inner earth infrastructure which is known as civil infrastructure in earthquake engineering now there are innumerable studies known as earthquake engineering then uh, seismic zone safety and preparedness and innumerable such vigilant measures are being taken care of the society and it is based on inner infrastructure management the inner uh, infrastructure that deals with three things the ground and the construction and the inner ground and the ground the ground and the inner ground connection with the various other approximate constructions also so that creates a totalitarian study it is known as inner layer infrastructure study <coughs> on the basis of which now they are con constructing lot of things in cyprus even before several millennia we had the construction of the base isolation which we are uh, introducing now base isolation under construction is a new introduction in our country or in the new emerging science that was there in the cypress construction and the ancient rome constructions earlier then there is also a type of construction known as elevated foundation of the building elevated building foundation then uh, friction pendulum bearing all of these things are very newly introduced things and we see lot of such things in the construction the problem is these norms must be very systematically <coughs> it must be followed which more financial resources as well as knowledge resources to adapt all of these things certainly we require lot of knowledge and financial resources with which a complete structure cannot be made in the society like that then based on these things now there must be a vigilance in there is a special designing known as earthquake uh, preventing architecture which is based on the vibration control technology vibration control technology and there are tests like uh, the shake table crash test the recent test is known as the shake table crash test by which they are well tested on the basis of which the new constructions are made stronger stipulations must be given by the department of construction department of infrastructure management as well as to engineer architects and other people also to the consumers the civilians of the society they must be given some awareness like they are constructing a beautiful house they must be given some knowledge about to, uh, how to live how to construct and live a secure life in a secure house that also the duty is safety mere beauty without the person alive or the infrastructure being collapsed that is merely useless so this is the thing so now we are having in innumerable structures like that which must be very properly planned like we are having timber frame structure we are having light frame structure we are having the adobe brick frame structure we are having sandstone we had limestone we had now we are having a uh, lot of other uh, uh, masonry systems up there now steel steel reinforcement system is there reinforced concrete system is there reinforced masonry system is there 
then innumerable such systems are that they must be designed in such a manner that they are not only eco friendly they are also disaster resistant in nature so this must come it is not properly coming because it is there in the high level of people those who are technocrats those who are technicians those who are academicians those who are research scholars those who are uh, contractors or those who are in the higher level upper level of thinking they are doing that it must reach the society by means of regional languages trans uh, that is translation then also by means of your proper information center like we are having ttd and other things rail railway network somebody told about the net availability of sources a cyber stage for discussion and a cyber information center must be made available that must be made available to the rural and semi rural areas also by distribution of pamphlets and by including this in education that must happen and to identify this uh, particular earthquake symptoms even before the in the first stage whenever there is the uh, that is mass imbalance starts and loosening of the framework structure they start that is by unusual clouding varahira is interpreted unusual clouds and behavioral changes in soil and water and infra species behavior observation within some animals they have tested with catfish likewise with animals worms ants lot of things are very much they are capable of identifying the p wave p wave which we cannot so this type of uh, particular things they can be made and also the emf that is the electromagnetic field will have a very conspicuous variation that must also be made now there are a lot of things that is a d meter micro satellite is available then the seismic electric signal source that is available and you know that in the year 1975 february china it predicted a very great earthquake by means of a traditional method february 4th of 1975 and from that region 1 million people have been evacuated and safely it happened it may fail in some exercises it is not having fullest authenticity in all occasions but it has worked out so repetitive exercises on various trial and error basis with various exposition must be made about understanding and coming to the real conclusion the second is the water problem there is hydral the shastra says bhoma is the earth caused disaster and varuna is that which is caused with water and vayavya is caused with wind and all of this the thermal it is agne it is due to we are having cold and heat wave a sudden rise in temperature with high humidity a sudden downfall in temperature resulting in hypothermia and hyperthermia suddenly it happens likewise due to temperature radiation uh, overloading and shearing the cold avalanches it is happening in snow areas because of now lot of people they are inhabiting this uh, snow areas and there is skiing a lot of moving the, towards that area as a tourism spot and other things etc so uh, the vulnerability has increased much in the snow areas also so these things are temperature variations and in water water there are two problems it is a what we call atiwrishti and anavrishti even if it is not available there is drought and famine if it is more it creates uh, floods then artificial floods and fountains in the form of drainage systems artificial floods are also created as a human contribution adding value Already existing uh, floods. Then coastal erosion happens. So coastal erosion, flood, and other uh, various other things are happening like drought and famine. So this flood is very much important. Now we are having flood is not a big problem except computation flood modeling. Recent inventions uh, they have come into the society. So there is a, a proper way of understanding these things. There are uh, various types of uh, floods also. There are coastal floods. They are different. Then catastrophic uh, floods are there. They are different. in floods are there they are innumerably flood things are there now what we do is we have to teach the people how to react in disaster we must first implant courage second thing is uh, gadgets that are essential third thing is training in prashikshana in training both the things are required one is sadhya dhairya second is sadhana so says the shastra so he must be given the courage how to act If the person is afraid by himself and finding a way finding to run away how we can serve the others so courage implantation in the minds of people in a selected people and training them with gadgets will make them how to save lives how to manage how to care for people how to counsel the people as a post trauma effect uh, there may be lot of other depressions in the mind how to deal out of this and also how to save himself because whenever a person is dealing with a problem some circumstances he will be having his problems for example in flood there may be an electrical damage there may be accident possibility there may be bio hazards there may be any type of hazard to the person those who are saving others also so how to save one's own self as well as deal with the process of effectively saving and counseling and upgrading the level of their services to the society that is very much important 
Then the second thing is drought. We only have contributed drought by means of uh, mismanagement of uh, the groundwater resources, by means of uh, a compressor motor and other things which we are using. The groundwater table has been totally caused by water impounding, by soil salination, by deforestation process and by overloading or over drifting of the groundwater levels we have resulted we are now seeing the benefits of what we have done in the form of deforestation in the form of desertification and drought so what we have to do everybody knows government is giving that you have to recycle water then transvestment in water then we have to do rainwater harvesting who does not know that everybody knows that they are doing they must be having a driving force the drain force comes only from Chaitanya, not from compulsion as a rule or not from teaching as a book. It will not, no book or no instruction or no regulation can create awareness in the society. Creation, in aware, creation of awareness in the minds is a samskara. It is a samskara. It is an influence. It is an influence of emergency. It is an influence of necessity. It is the influence of altruism. It is the influence of self-driven mechanism. Innumerable instincts, they drive the person go for such inspiration. So it must be created only by those who are claiming to be spiritual. They must teach how the spiritual life is very much essential. Spiritual consideration is Atmavat Sarva Bhuteshu. Considering everything as divine or divine manifestation and organizing there are two things. Spiritual turbulence is also there. Spiritual thing does not mean that you have to sit uh, in a lonely place and close your eyes. That is at a different. That is an inner journey and inner pursuit. There is also a dynamic spiritualism in which we can manage clusters and we can totally encompass the whole community into all around peace and happiness. That is also a type of dynamic spiritualism or applied spiritualism that must be taught to the people. Then we are having lot of these uh, tornadoes and cyclones. Everything is known to uh, uh, all, all of this person. They do not need any explanation at all. Then second thing is disturbing the nature. The most sentimental or the most uh, that is a disastrous force of the disaster is if you touch the more sensitive and more sensitive areas of the earth, suddenly it will burst in some disaster. For example, the sensitive area of earth is, earth's inner surface is there. You are making minings, you are constructing dams, superstructures you are making by construction of dams and there are oil extractions and mineral ore extractions and chemical extractions are done from earth. Like industrialization is done. So whenever you do something by disturbing the natural structure of the earth, Crossing a level, that is exploration is different from exploitation, you know that. So all the other places, wherever you want anything, there is a proper methodology of extraction and a proper method of uh, rebalancing the situation. So wherever you mine, you create a vacuum there. Wherever you make a uh, dam construction, there you add moss. So these imbalances, geo-imbalances and eco-imbalances, they create disasters, which are not considered by more people at all. See, due to of expansion or exploitation or enrichment of their own status of living, they do everything and after coming to suffering, they are researching in the same thesis by remodeling everything which is not possible because we have come here a very long way and to repatriate to our original life or to bring everything to settlement is not an easy job. It is a very great arduous risk. So these type of environmental disasters resulting in pollution, resulting in the global warming, global warming is worse than 100 wars. Global warming worse than 100 wars. When they take their real shape and raise their heads, we will realize that it is a wondrous disaster, calamitous disaster. So what we want to say is, the greatest disaster, which is the greatest disaster, the greatest disaster to the society is not realizing or not preparing for the disaster management. That is the greatest disaster. <laughs> Disasters are <coughs> unavoidable, they are mitigable, they are understandable, they are executable, let us but we have to create an all-round awareness. It is not a secular or partial awareness. All-round awareness in various members of the society we have to create. Likewise, a health hazard. There is a book known as a death by medicine. Most of the people are dying only by medicines. <laughs> really, it happens. Now there is pandemics. Pandemics. Pandemics deals with emerging, new emerging diseases. New diseases are coming. Everywhere it is, there is a competition between the pathogens and pathologies. Whenever a pathologist, he discovers a new thing, there is a competitive mechanism that is there in the global inbuilt consciousness of all species. They develop something. Now they are studying that. What is antibiotic resistance in pathogens? They don't uh, respond at all. And now there is recently methicillin resistant. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureum. Now recently they have identified methicillin is an antibiotic. Gradually it has developed a resistance against its own antibiotic. 
So antibiotic resistance is super bugs in pathology. So these pathogens, they also competitively rise. So what? So they are once again proving Namastubhya Vaidhiraja Yamaraja Sohodra. They are proving that uh, they are worse than Yama, who just obtains only life, not money. So by that uh, it is happening. So preparation methods, also in India, preparation methods are very slow. For example, there is coastal erosion. Now we have seen tsunami. We have seen what? There is a greater tsunami. We have already seen. So now no preparation, no energetic and effective preparation is there. In Europe, all the places, they are having sea walls. They are having sea walls. And they are having also a process of uh, beach fortification. By means, uh, what are the depleted sand or sediment particles? They are replaced by a proper source. So this is also there in the foreign countries. Now Thames, you know that they are having a mechanical barrier which eternally separates that uh, from flood. And uh, we are having the Florida beach restoration process which happened recently. The total beach has been restored. And Netherlands, they are having one delta work which by which they have constructed a very wonderful bridge against the North Sea floods. Now there is a process going on in Russia, St. Petersburg Flood Prevention Facility Complex, it is going on. No such step is going on. So what they are thinking is these things are occasional and they are not repetitive. So if it we can see or if it comes repetitive, we can see. So they don't believe still that it is a frequent visitor like our uncle or aunt. Still they are thinking that it is occasional and rare in one millennia or one century. So these type of measures, even they are dead slow in our country, which requires more technology share, more knowledge share, and mutual share between lot of people in the higher and upper levels, benefactors and beneficiaries. These three types of shares only, it is going to enrich the situation. So biological, now there are two things, threat from life and threat to life. Biological warfare is the threat from life forms. By using these pathogens, immediately they are making a very great biological warfare which is enough to destruct this galaxy not even India or the globe now there are a lot of biodefense uh, mechanisms they are invented even recently the Israel University they have invented a bio pen the bio pen immediately smells the fragrance of any such destructible element and reports within 20 minutes so research is going on everywhere problem is going on everywhere everybody knows everything then what are all the difficulties so based on these things, I have to come to the conclusive section saying something from the vision of our Shastras. See, for point number one, whatever that brings death only is considered to be disaster. It is not so. Disaster is something which can bring one, immediate death or it is a slow poison process which can bring death or totally which makes uh, the presence or life of a person not distinguishable from the death, which makes the person useless or which makes the person's disastrous worse than nature. So these are all also considered to be the disastrous factors. So death number one, depletation number two, deterioration number three and demoralization, four things are considered to be disastrous factors. Number one. Number two, not only we are having these disasters, there are five types of disasters. Whatever you see as a volcano, a tornado, a hailstorm, a cyclone, a typhoon, then mudslide, mud flow, landslide, avalanche, then biological warfare, war, riot, clash, conflict. All of these various things, innumerable things, including accidents, air accident, rail accident, sea accident, road accident, chemical accident, explosive accident, fire accident, superstructure collapse accident, innumerable things that you have listed are not. Everything, these things come under turbulent disaster. There are four more disasters. One is a silent disaster. That is a silent disaster. And the second thing is a decent disaster. Third thing is innocent disaster. Fourth thing is a negligent disaster. So what is silent disaster? That which does not show its face in the society, but exists and totally corrupts the society and totally extirpates the social purpose is known as silent disaster. Innocent disaster is very common. Like uh, it comes as a friend. Somebody told uh, in one conference that necessity is the mother of inventions. Then I told necessity is the mother of inventions, curiosity is the father, but danger is the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so that which comes very innocently, but behaves and shows its real form, that is innocent disaster. The third thing it is decent and to be frank, I don't mind saying that the computer, the IT industry, I told in one seminar on IT administration that there are three problems 
which totally dumped the person's capability and ability to not to reach to the multispheric regions. One is IT, second is IET, third thing is high score IT. <laughs> so likewise, this is the decent disaster. Totally swinging a person's emotional balance or multi-level organizing skill of his intellectual or cognitive load and skills that is totally dumped in a single area. Now they are uh, researching about occupational therapy, repetitive stress injury, now they are doing research. So there is a golden rule of nature, number one. Whatever you claim from nature, even a single penny, you have to pay with interest for treatment, resurrection, reconstruction or any other thing later. Whatever you get from nature, now they have extracted a lot of things from nature through industrialization. Industrialization that has created the most possible ways for global warming. Now in global warming research and solutions, they will pay all the industrially squeezed money with interest for research and execution of the global warming mitigation project. Certainly they are going to do. Because nature has a balance. There is a global constant. You cannot disturb that. So, the third thing is negligent. What is negligent? That which is considered to be something infinitesimal or trivial in the state that grows to a disaster. So there are innumerable disasters and I want to name few of the disasters and conclude this session. Number one, the first disaster is the main reason for the executive difficulty and uh, the adverseness that we are possessing and experiencing in implementing all the policies is known as administrative disaster which has been given the name as corruption. <laughs> this is the major problem due to which what the management as well as the detection, research, whatever we are doing the fruits of our service, either scientific service or social service, it does not reach the society. They are trapped, grabbed in various stages and diverted to various areas. So administrative error or disaster is corruption and that is, that is now serving as a, a very noble and loyal servant to all disasters. Till this servant is there, there is no possibility for us to effectively do disaster management. Number one. The second thing is, a social disaster which is in the form of sentiments and organizations. Sentimental disaster is religious clash and various things which you know that community clashes, conflicts and other things are there. And second thing now they have been discussing about the temple disasters. They also come under society. How to organize a group, how to systematize. Those things emerge only when situations arise. That is known as contextual emergence. How to organize and how to benefit. So it must be balanced in such a manner that the system must not be sacrificed. The beauty of the system as well as benefit to the society must be balanced with the equilibrium. And nothing can be sacrificed. Though the talent of organizing the society is not sacrificing one thing. It is a bilateral organization in which the benefit of the system as well as benefiting the society, they are very equilaterally organized and governed. So that is not a social. It is social. The third thing is cultural disaster. Culture does not uh, just rest in a person's external appearance, but the behavioral culture of a person. Now we are seeing a lot of orphanages, we are having a lot of uh, slums, we are seeing a lot of other things like old age homes. Old age homes are good examples for cultural disaster. So these type of disasters, they are also rooted in the society. <coughs> All of these various disasters, they are caused, they are added to a pandemic disaster. Somebody told, uh, what is the uh, problem? of the society and what is the mistake of science and spirituality. Then we gave the answer, the problem of the society is that, is that it is burning, that is abnormality, that it is burning. And the mistake of spiritualism is, it has failed to extinguish, the practical spiritualism is, that it has failed to extinguish. And the mistake of the science is, it has added a combustible fuel. When there is, when there is burning, spiritualism has failed to put water. But science has added petrol to that. That is the problem. So scientific disaster is a disaster. See, whenever you know that, there is going to be, that is known as insight, deep thought. Whenever you are revealing some sensitive portions like nanoparticles, like genes, like DNA research, genome mapping, eugenics, innumerable things you are dealing with, the fundamental factors of the world. Whenever you are dealing, you must also simultaneously deal with the problems that is that sociological adaption and re reflection. <coughs> it is science within you. If it goes to a person, then it is subjected to rainwater is pure. But it reaches the uh, land by passing through a lot of impurities. So science or spiritualism, when it reaches the society, it is also to be considered with the mind setup.
the blunders and wonders of human mind and psychological collective mental setup of the society must be taken along with your science of spiritualism. Likewise, the social setup is not prepared, science is very fast and the society has not developed much, it is having only external development and decoration. Internally, they are not cultured and so civilized to organize themselves and to organize others. So, at that time, the science must not bring a lot of that things which are bi-handed weapons. So, there is scientific disaster. The Shastra concludes that ethical disaster is the reason for all disasters. Rule of ethics has been totally downrooted. So, with this conclusion, I want to say a few points which we must take as task force system or operation methodology by which we can bring peace to the world. First of all, our idea, our aim is to create a clean, green, tranquil world we have to leave for our succeeding generations. It must be a clean world, it must be a green world and it must be a tranquil world we have to leave. The second thing, what is peace and harmony? Harmony is your coordination which you show to the nature and peace is the response given by nature as a gift for harmony. So unless you are harmonious, unless you are principled, you cannot expect the gift of nature, you can expect only the wrath of nature. So organizing yourself perfectly, that will make us to understand the nature and to get benefit from nature more. Number three, it must be brought in some methods. Just now recently I have heard a lot of such methodologies from such people to create an information set system through net sources. Number two, we have to make very disease. We have to make a disaster mapping like brain mapping, mind, mind mapping, and genome mapping and zonal mapping that is done in various systems. We have to make disaster mapping where there is hunger, where there is poverty, where there is employment and there is unemployment, where there is infant mortality, where there is malnutrition, where there is a frequency of natural disasters, where there is war tension, where there is conflict and communal clash tension is there. So all of these natural man-made environmental responsive various type of disasters they be they must be made as a map for India and exclusively for the globe also this must be taught to the people not only teaching iron is there sulfur is there potassium is there theater is there hospital is here and beach is here not only teaching centers of services and tourism but also we must go for a disaster tourism we must have an idea where there is disaster where already affected where about to be affected where there is an impending danger where there is frequency where possibility we have to infer all of these things and some of the persons available here they have to make a disaster zone and mapping for the total ideology and also methodology for the whole society at least for India and number three civilian response is very much essential <laughs> that is possible by three ways how to teach coordination to all members on the basis of colony just as you are doing Chaturthi Puja Deepa you are celebrating you must celebrate this thing also otherwise other celebrations will be prohibited <laughs> So how to organize by coordination to all civilians, training to volunteers and also in the academic inclusion it must be included as an unavoidable, it is not an optional but obligatory subject to all students, obligatory subject to all students. What is domestic disaster or danger in electric, in fire, in load, in handling load, in placement, displacement, in construction, numerable things are there. So starting with the school, train to the volunteers and teach coordination to all members of the society, it is very much essential. Now we have talked about all the things that are inauspicious and pernicious. <laughs> like saying the hundred names of Kauravas, we have, say, we have just narrated the names of all unwanted things in the world because we want only one thing, that is peace. So for getting that one thing, we have to erode or we have to totally uproot all of these hundreds of elements uh, in order to keep Yudhishthira in the place. Enthronement, uh, innumerable they have to die likewise to keep the peace which is the father or which is the reservoir of morality, order, discipline, all around happiness and various other byproducts and derivatives. We have to do all of these things in this society and I offer my devotion and dedication technically, traditionally, spiritually, socially as a human being socially and technically as a person researching in the same thing in the disaster management and pre-detection methodologies and as well as a real servant of the God who is the animator of the world, I wish and bless all the participants to reach. So what is the greatness? Already I used to say, the greatness of knowledge is to reach to the most common person in this society. The knowledge becomes great if it benefits everybody. It becomes greater when everybody realizes the greatest knowledge is that, that should serve even the 
common personality in the society and I wish and bless that the laborious and arduous risks that have been taken meritoriously by this conference should fructify with the blessings, with the benedictory shower of the Almighty, the universal spirit and let everybody rest in peace, live in peace, confer peace to others also, resulting in global harmony, uh, tranquility and prosperity. Narayan, Narayan, Narayan.